Well, I'm excited to share a very simple practice that can help you expand on your sample libraries in a really good way. You know, as a music producer, I believe that this is one of my most powerful assets in the studio, my own proprietary sample library. And probably like many of you, when I go about producing an album or a remix for an artist, it's not unusual for me to put a ton of my own content into that production. So much so that I started to recognize this many years ago and I started a little practice. Oh man, has this paid off? Couldn't be simpler. I'm talking about essentially getting to the end of every production and after the thing's been delivered and signed off on and everything else, I'll take the time to go back into that production. If it's a whole album, I'll go through it song by song. If it's a remix, I'll just tackle it as a one-off remix. But at the end of every production, I'll go into that track and I'll, I'll revisit it and I'll identify the killer parts that I added to that track and I'll resample them. I'm not talking about sampling any of the artist tracks. I'm just talking about focusing on the parts as a producer that you introduce to that remix or to that album project. In some cases, we'd be talking about a drum loop that might have a little bit of samples from my own library. It might have drum machines, loops, all kinds of different things combined to create, say, a whole drum loop. I love going back and identifying those pieces and resampling them because in some cases, I might be sort of resampling some of the same content I already have in my proprietary library, but now it's at a different tempo. It's with other elements making up that drum beat, for instance. You know, this could be such a powerful production tool. You know, someone hands you a brand new song to do a quick remix on. If you've been up to this practice, it's more than likely that in that extensive library that you have, you're going to have something close to the right tempo and key. And that can just be so powerful when you're trying to pull something off, particularly under a crunch, right? Well, for today's example, I came down to the studio late last night and opened up an old remix that I did with my humble brother, Traz. This is a track that I recently restored and shared in a long form mix right here on the channel. So last night, as I'm going through that remix, my goal is to simply find samples, to first identify all of the, the parts that Traz and I introduced to that production, and then go back and isolate different combos, create killer sounding stereo samples that I just export into another folder. Well, the result of me going through that remix last night and trying different combinations and exporting audio files is that I'm left with a folder that has 24 killer sounding stereo samples in it. 24 samples that I know I'm gonna have a use for in the future, check it. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go ahead and make a sample bank. You know, my weapon of choice when it comes to samplers is UVI's Falcon. And it's sort of a funny story as to how I started using this program. For over 20 years, I exclusively made all of my sample banks on a program called Mach 5, made by Mo2. Well, a number of years ago, they stopped supporting that program. All this effort had gone into all these libraries that I built for it. Well, you can imagine how excited I was when I learned that Mo2 licensed the original audio engine of Mach 5 from UVI. So I learned that Falcon is like a super heavy duty version of Mach 5, basically. And all of my sample libraries that I'd spent two decades building, every one of them opened right up in Falcon. So yeah, I'm all over this program for so many good reasons. One of the other reasons that I love this UVI engine is that when you go to save your samples, it doesn't save them in some weird proprietary bunch of nonsense. It just saves all of those samples in their original format to a new folder in your sound library. And of course, Falcon comes in both the standalone version and the plugin. Now, whenever I'm creating sample banks, 
I use the standalone version. And whenever I'm being creative with those sample banks, it's almost always as a plugin inside of my DAW, in Pro Tools in my case. Well, Falcon couldn't have made it any easier to create a sample bank. Check this out. All I do is I go to my folder of 24 stereo samples in this case, select all of them, and then select the very first one and drag it down to the keyboard on Falcon. And depending on where you hover your mouse over that key, you'll have different options of how those samples will be laid out. You can have all 24 samples trigger on one note. You can have, if I hover a little bit higher, you can see that it's splitting all 24 notes into different velocities, but still all on one note. That's not what we want, right? If I hover a little bit higher, boom, all of a sudden, all 24 of those samples are just laid across the keys. That's what I'm after. And I want it all to start on C1. So I'll just double check that I'm on C1, make sure I hover into that position and then let go of my mouse. Boom, all of my samples are now loaded. <laughs> Because this sample bank is only 24 samples, something that I will often do, and I've already prepared this, is I'll go ahead and put all 24 of those samples on another set of keys on the same bank, but reversed. In other words, I can easily go into my sampler and I can tell the sampler to reverse any given sample, right? And play it backwards. But when I'm getting creative and I put up a sample bank, and I just want immediate access to stuff. For me personally, if I've got a sample bank, like I'm looking at that's as simple as 24 stereo samples, I'll very often create another folder in advance of creating a sample bank where I go and take all 24 of those samples and I reverse them. I know the first note in this sample bank, the one of 24 starts on C1. The last sample ends on A sharp two. So the way I handle this, I take my reverse samples, I start on one just exactly the same way. I drag them down to C3 and I lay them out across the keys in exactly the same way we did. Let go of that. Now everything works out in octaves, right? I know that this sample reversed shows up two octaves higher. Very, very cool and very handy. Here's our last sample of that set, the big guitar power chord. Well, I know I can simply jump two octaves up and hit the same key and get the reverse version. This is where creativity will just go, it'll just have you buried in the studio for hours, I promise you. If you lay out your, your sample banks like this, where you've got like a bunch of samples and then a couple or three octaves higher, you've got all those samples laid out in reverse. Oh yeah, this can be super awesome when you're jamming and, and, and just, you know, looking at your sample banks and trying different options. That could be so creative and so fun. It doesn't take more than a few minutes to get rolling with a track, right? We've got all these samples loaded up into Falcon. I've split the forward and reverse playing samples and got them on matching keys. Let's go ahead and save this as a sample bank. And on Falcon's file menu, I'll go and select save program and samples as, and then just simply direct it to my Falcon library. And this is exactly where I identify what key and tempo that the sample bank is in. And I include it right into the name of the program. Makes it so much simpler later when I'm reviewing my sample banks. I can just instantly see what key it's in and what tempo. So in this case, I'm going to call it Remix. It's an A sharp and it's 135.3 BPM. So I make that new folder in my sound banks folder and just call this program exactly the same thing. We're going to call it Remix A sharp and 135.3 BPM. And I'm going to hit save. Now I'll boot up Pro Tools. I'll load up uh, Falcon as a plugin and I'll recall that sample bank we just created. Make a new instrument track, boot up our Remix. Yeah, 
yeah, the possibilities are just endless. And the real power of what we're talking about won't even show up until it starts compounding itself. Through this practice of sort of resampling your own content and creating brand new sample banks, yeah, this, this compounds definitely. This starts to expand on your library in a really big way and in a way that you sort of can't compare it to anything because what, you're, what are you doing? You're sort of constantly always improving on that library. In my own experience, you know, repurposing your own content just pays dividends. You just can't even measure how valuable this is. Thank you for sitting in on today's session.